Hello and welcome everyone uh, to the next episode of the Analytics India Magazine podcast Simulated Reality. Uh, today we have with us Suresh Kumar Rajasekhar. He is the VP of Technology at Optum Global Solutions. Uh, uh, welcome Suresh. How are you today? Hey, doing great Kashyap. Uh, you know, nice meeting you. Yes, uh, likewise. So I think we are going to uh, speak a very, uh, uh, you know, topic that has been uh, discussed heavily, especially after the COVID-19 pandemic, and that is the use of uh, data, data analytics, data science, AI, and all these emerging technologies in the field of healthcare, right? Uh, but I just want to take a step back, right? Uh, and before we kind of understand uh, why uh, we use data, uh, most leaders, uh, technology leaders such as yourself say that First, you have to understand the problems. You don't start with the data and say that, you know, let me take data and solve it with it. What are some of the problems that have, you know, existed? Because uh, healthcare as a field, we have collected a lot of data. It may be digitized or not, and the entire digitization process we can discuss later. But it has always collected a lot of data. What has historically and then maybe closer to, you know, uh, 2022 as we enter 2023, what have, been, what have been some of the problems in healthcare that data analytics have been identified to be the best solution? And why, why do you think data, data is the best solution for them? Thanks for asking that, you know, like instead of directly jumping into where we can apply cookie cutter, right? Thank you. Uh, so let's try to understand, you know, uh, first of all, the healthcare landscape a little bit. Uh, Institute of Health Improvement, uh, IHI, uh, almost 15 years back uh, in 2007, they identified patient experience of how they go through the care and uh, overall population health and uh, cost of care as three major challenges in healthcare. And uh, they called it as triple M, and it is widely popular across the board. And uh, we have made tremendous progress with this aim, uh, a nice guidance that was set in process. However, I would say that even after 15 plus years, uh, some of the challenges in these areas continue to remain same, right? So let's look at, you know, like, uh, uh, why is it so, right? Let's pick India as an example. Uh, if you pick India, the in the last 15 years, the challenges have drastically changed. 15 years back, probably, you know, we had more of uh, communicable diseases as a challenge, but right now, lifestyle diseases have you know like uh, taken uh, front seat, right? And they and uh, and of course, although we have overall uh, positive improvement in most of the areas, um, uh, one of the offshoot of that is increase in lifetime expectancy. In this 15 years, the lifetime expectancy in India alone, uh, on an average, has actually risen from 64 to 70 years, which is a good development. However, it also poses a totally different challenge in the healthcare area, which is like how do I handle geriatric care, which is totally different. And it process, it, it actually kind of, you know, like poses a different set of challenges as compared to a typical challenges that you would have seen before. So the good news is as, as, as we have progressed in multiple fronts, there is also tremendous progress in the healthcare technology or health tech in the last 15 years as well, which actually gives quite a lot of new opportunities. So just to summarize, the challenges continue to remain the same, which is around patient experience, and uh, affordability, and uh, how do you, you know, like, what is the outcome? How do you create the outcome for the overall population? So, so what I'm getting from you is you're saying that the nature of diseases or the nature of health, the approaches taken to for the healthcare might have evolved, but the solutions remain similar. Is the problems a, kind of remain same, yes. Sorry, the problems kind of remain same. The way the problems are approached remain same. And before before we jump to the next question, what what were the what three? Uh, what was the framework? The three things that you mentioned for the cost of. It's called triple aim. It is basically how do you enhance a, a patient's experience? Number one, how do you improve overall population health? Number two, and uh, number three is uh, you know cost of care. So it is called triple aim. And of course, uh, there are some who also say providers' experience is also equally important. I'll touch upon that later. Okay, okay. So now that you know we have a framework, and I think frameworks are very important when it comes to kind of scalability of data solutions uh, uh, or you know their implementation. Uh, how do you think has uh, data analytics enabled solving problems? 
uh, and what are some of the state of the art problems that healthcare is solving today while that's a very broad question if you can kind of help us understand some of the you know uh, some of the uh, aspects of how the what the approach is taken when it comes to solving healthcare problems sure for example let's pick up uh, you know improving a uh, uh, patient's uh, experience or you know like uh, the care given or outcome of a patient right as compared to uh, um, a couple of decades back today we do have uh, availability of multitude of data not just the data that is typically available once the patient is sick but also uh, if we are interested in tracking the individual uh, 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 remotely uh, we can actually have access to the data of typical lifestyle and whether the medication adherence has happened or not and we can actually also you know interject in the patient's life in making sure that some of the positive aspects are continued for example better lifestyle and adherence to medication and so on and so forth and make quite a lot of differences right so this level of detailed data that is available can actually help us in providing a customized care which is also called as precision healthcare right so it can actually help in providing a customized care to an individual and of course there are also some allied uh, developments that has happened in terms of uh genomic uh, uh, development in, in terms of genomic studies uh if we can actually have uh, some of the genomic details of the patient we can actually fine tune the medication that is to be given as well so these are certain um, very quick advantages that we have number one uh, um, availability of data of the individual which can actually help us to provide a more customized care number two more of a precision health correct correct so uh, while these are the problems right uh the implementation uh, through the use of data for healthcare needs good professionals who understand data science right or data analytics per se but at the same time there's a tremendous talent crunch and we have we have talked several in the, the last uh, year there's a there's a big talk around the entire idea of citizen data science where it is it, it means that professionals uh, or domain experts within the field uh, use uh, technology or leverage technology how uh, how how efficient or where where do we stand when it comes to you know doctors or profession uh, healthcare professionals understanding uh, data driven technologies and how do you think it can be uh, you know how do they how can they leverage it the best according to american medical association which did a survey of uh, doctors and clinicians in us almost 50% of the people who were surveyed gave one or two symptoms of burnout and uh, watching burnout is very critical because this can actually lead to a uh, much more uh, riskier uh, outcome uh, with respect to patient safety right so this led to some of the leaders even calling out physician burnout as a major problem to tackle and they started talking about provider experience and people even called out saying that to the triple aim can we add provider experience as a fourth focus area and call it as quad triple aim right so uh, if you look at you know why they get into this burnout if, if through the interviews it is understood that one of the top reason why they get burnout is because of the uh, related administrative work that they need to do a uh, very manual mundane day to day work of reporting what they did in that overall uh, uh, patient journey that they came across that particular day right so these are very simple low hanging fruits for a technologist which can be completely automated this is also motivation why a lot more healthcare professionals are embracing modern ai based tools because they find that it can actually enable their job much better and overall it can improve the outcome as well as reducing their burnout so yeah. uh, so there is a there is a huge motivation for healthcare professional uh, to embrace these tools and again you need not be a technocrat to use these tools as well yeah i think the motivation uh, is a very good uh, point that you make right uh, they, them embracing technologies uh, uh, while it is dependent on their work getting easier there are various other factors that can you know uh, enable this a bit better uh, when it comes to the usability of it right or uh, let's say that they uh, the, the technology is shaped in a manner where everybody kind of is uh, or it is democratized and in a way that all of the healthcare professionals are used it across what are some of the uh, what are some of the what is some of the advice that you will give 
these health health tech companies or healthcare startups were building these tools right uh, to kind of uh, catalyze the process of uh, healthcare professionals embracing technology yeah, kashyap uh, i'll go back to the triple aim again you know like or the quadruple aim and i'll chart out some three areas which definitely uh, techno technologists and startups can equally focus upon number one is continue to have a patient centric approach that's the most important thing you need to remember that uh, you know your journey is around the patient and of course uh, 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 the way we should work upon us we should be able to anticipate the patient needs and involve the patient in their complete healthcare journey so that we are able to provide the best care and at their most convenient location that's another important thing that has evolved of late the second area uh, as we talked about is the provider experience by itself right we would like to envision a future where doctors can actually spend their time which is their core time on what they like the most which is basically to interact with the patient and provide care that is what they like and of course uh, with all the digital solutions it is very easy for us to enable that particular pro pro provider experience to be much more enhanced and better and uh, the last but most important fact is uh, still the healthcare cost is uh, still uh, expensive and uh, there is potential scope for making it much more affordable for example if we are able to steer our members towards more affordable uh, generics we can actually save a lot of money for them if we are able to provide clinicians with some of the state of art decision support system with them where by pulling some historical data they are able to make some critical clinical decision at the time where it is needed we can actually help in improving the clinical outcome overall all of this can actually lead in reducing the overall cost and make it more affordable so i would say that you know a patient centric approach is a must and uh, uh, keep the provider experience uh, uh, to the core and uh, look forward towards making the uh, overall healthcare more affordable okay so a patient centric a patient centric approach is the uh, is the is the message to take out of it right uh, while pay, at the very beginning of the conversation we did mention right the overall industry is uh, uh, changing uh, in a lot of ways uh, but at the same time the problems remain the same uh, when that is the case uh, right do, do you think that uh, even if we keep the approach patient centric uh the problems will change over a period of time or uh taking a step back do you think that covid-19 impacted the entire approach to be taken when it comes to emerging tech in uh the field of uh, healthcare and what are what are your some of your predictions going forward and how will it change so there are two parts to this question one i'll answer if the problem remains same then what is that what is that that has changed right and second one is you know like how covid has impacted so i'll address the first one the problem remains the same but what has changed is definitely a plethora of technology and tools have enabled us to actually identify risks much early as compared to what it was before earlier it was more of a reactive approach now we have an opportunity to be more proactive by be, being able to identify uh, an individual what risk an individual may actually go through number one and let us say that you know like there is onset of a disease then right now with the kind of uh, tools that we have it is much more easier for us to assist with the disease progression management and also as i spoke earlier uh, we can also come out with tailor made decisions to you know like uh, help the individuals in the need so these are some of the major changes that has happened although the problem remains the same the approach has changed much drastically now coming back to you know coming to the uh, what are what what are the key areas that has changed post covid even before covid started one of the trend that was happening was care was actually moving out of large hospital towards home that was you know something which was actually happening but post covid what has happened is people have started to accept telehealth which is you know like today 38 times much more in prevalence as compared to pre pandemic and definitely this convenience is continue to stay as one of the uh, surveys that was done with all who uh, uh, leverage telehealth almost 83% of the patients said they would like to continue to use telemedicine uh, even post pandemic uh, uh, results as well right so this is a major shift that has happened post covid where people are accepting telehealth and telemedicine and they are in fact expecting that care should be at their convenience at their convenient location so this is a major shift that has happened post covid 
Yeah, I think you mentioned that people, so people are accepting technology more. And I think one of the reasons for that is that uh, technology, uh, healthcare professionals as well as technologists when working to build these solutions are taking a more uh, proactive approach than a reactive approach. And I think one of the major steps for this proactive approach is, especially for a data analytics or a data science solution, is enabling good collection of good data, right? So what traditionally legacy hospitals in India, you know, they have their, or especially government hospitals in India, they have relied heavily on, you know, just paperwork. And there's like huge stacks of paper within the hospitals, which we get to see. As a professional, as a technologist who's working in the healthcare sector, have you seen this changing, especially in India? Uh, and going forward, if India has to play a role, uh, active role, uh, and it can in so many ways, Point number one being uh, the amount of data that it can generate. What are some of the steps that we need to take so that uh, India becomes, you know, the uh, torchbearer of healthcare and uh, analytics, uh, healthcare data science solutions? Yeah, I'm very optimistic what India can do. Actually, uh, the way we leapfrogged on the telecommunication revolution, the same can actually happen in the healthcare digital space as well. Right now, most of the infrastructure that is needed is right now available. It has been set up uh, uh, very actively by uh, both the central and many of the state governments as well. So I'm very optimistic about that. Now, talking about uh, documents to uh, digitization, today the progress in NLP has come to an extent where you have a very decent level of accuracy in converting any uh, any paper to a, a digital uh, 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 to a digital data. Right, so that's not a that's not an issue at all. There are hundreds of solutions out there. Uh, the difference is only between you know like marginal 0.001, or uh, that is the level of efficiency we are talking about in terms of digitization. Now, uh, set this aside for a moment. Look at the talent base that we have in this country. We have roughly around you know like 1.6 million plus uh, tech pool, and it is only constantly growing, and that actually gives an opportunity for. Uh, us to transform any sector that we pick up. And healthcare is one such sector, which actually is really in need of advanced analytics and a lot of digital technologies. So I'm very optimistic with the amount of talent pool that is available and the kind of focus that we have around healthcare. I think India can actually uh, set it as an example on how uh, the futuristic digital healthcare should be provided. Okay, so if if you have to put it on a scale of one to ten, where you know one one is where where we use still papers, and ten is where we are uh, we are at the highest technology uh, enabled uh, hospital, where you know decisions uh, where healthcare professionals and technology collaborate to give the best healthcare advice. Where do you think we stand on one to ten? I think uh, uh, I I would not like to rate ourselves on that. Uh, but if you ask me uh, whether uh, people or the institutions have done the right level of digitization, uh, looking at all their uh, current uh, um, uh, limitations, I think they have done their best, right? Today, uh, as compared to not, not saving any records to uh, saving the records and uh, scanning every paper that actually every patient gets printed out, all these efforts are actually, you know, like big time, movement towards uh, making healthcare more digitized. So I would say that, you know, right now, uh, the level of digitization is up to where uh, uh, people are uh, seeing some of the major challenges. And as we discover more new challenges, or as we uncover, or as we, you know, close some of those low hanging fruits, I would say, we may actually, you know, like uh, up, up our digital game totally differently. So it is going to be a continuous journey so it will be unfair for us to rate uh, on a scale of 1 to 10 where we are today. No, nevertheless, that's very uh, promising, you know. Uh, and uh, I think uh, with that uh, note and uh, hopefully a technology-enabled healthier lifestyle in India, uh, I would like to come to the end of this podcast. Thank you, Suresh, uh, for your time and uh, your insights. Hey, thank you. Thanks, Kashir. Okay. Nice meeting thank you. you. Bye. Nice to meet you too.